Hi friends, how are you? It's Paige Lyell here. I hope that you are doing well. Uh, I wanted to share something that has happened in my community as of late. I'm getting a lot of members from member from my community wanting me to speak about this for a particular reason. And I'm gonna go over that reason at the end, but I think that speaking on this in general is an okay thing to do. I guess I'll just get to it. There's no other way to really go about it. I don't think that there's any um huge content warnings. This isn't a crime case or anything. I don't have a disclaimer of any kind of a foul play involved or anything. I live in a very small town. Nothing really happens here. And when things do happen, you know everybody. The only the only things that I remember ever happening were teenagers getting busted with drugs. <laughs> there aren't huge things, but this one really hits close to home. Uh -huh. On Sunday, June 12th at around 3.30 p.m., little 11-year-old Draven Graham wandered away from his home. From the information that I've gathered, it seems that Draven primarily lives with his mother in a city about 15 minutes away from here and was here visiting his father as he usually did on weekends. They lived just one street down from me. And at that day, at that time, I was here in my house one street away. It is said that he left the house on his own accord with no shoes on and holding a white Samsung tablet. It was also advertised that Draven Graham was autistic. Everyone was quite nervous for any multitude of reasons as one would be. One major reason as to why this was so terrifying is because behind that street is a river and the river goes all the way along real close to us still that way which then goes into a big lake. Autistic children are much more likely to run away than allistic children and also much more likely like I think it's like 46 percent or something more likely to die by drowning than holistic children. I wasn't aware of this news until around 7 p.m. that night. I was outside with my father and one of my friends when we saw a cop car going super, super slow by my house and looking at us. And I was curious about what that was when my friend told me that he and some of our other friends were sort of down the road. We were all going to uh, one of our friend's siblings' houses who also lives just down the road. They said that they uh, were apparently around, you know, the area where Draven was last seen. But I'm not sure if it was them. I feel like they would have told me if they did see him. I don't want to ask because <laughs> it's all a lot. But it is said that he was last seen on the street that my friends were on. When my friend told me why the cop was around, I asked, how'd you know? Did you get an Amber Alert? I didn't get an Amber, an Amber Alert. And he said, no, he didn't get an Amber Alert. It was because he was around the area, which I thought was weird. And the fact that I didn't get an Amber Alert. It, it had been a few hours, I figured an Amber Alert would be issued. Anyway, most of the advertising for finding Draven to the community was on Facebook or on other social medias getting shared around. As the day became night and there was still no sign of Draven anywhere, the community was advised to stop searching outside of our own properties. The police were nervous that anyone would end up contaminating any kind of evidence. There were canine sniffer dogs trying to track his scent, which is also another reason why we were all told to stay inside. We wanted the dogs to have a go at, the best possible go at finding Draven's scent. And so we were advised to look on our own properties in our own outbuildings and such to see if Draven had hidden anywhere. Apparently he had a tendency to hide. There were still a lot of members of the community that were searching at night and people were searching by the river. They were searching in drain pipes. They were climbing trees to see if he had climbed a tree. The community really got together to try to get this little boy home. And on to the next day, people were still trying to help out as much as they could. The OPP, which is the Ontario Provincial Police, were bringing in other task forces in to help look for Draven. They had boats patrolling the river and the lake. There was word out to counties all in the area. Overnight, they figured if he was walking continuously, he could be hours away. And so alerts were sent out all over. They had helicopters surveying the area. They began having divers in the lake and in the River. In the early hours of Monday, June 13th, Draven's clothes were found right beside the river. There was still no sign of Draven. Parents hypothesized that because it rained the night prior and he didn't like being wet, he likely took his wet clothes off. That would be more comfortable for him. I believe at that point people really expected the worst. A little boy has been away from home for 18 hours and now he is declothed and his clothes are 
next to a river 24 hours after his disappearance. On Monday, June 13th, at around 3.30 p.m., 11-year-old Draven Graham's body was found in the river. At the time I'm filming this, that was yesterday, and they have not released much more information, except for the fact that they are not suspecting foul play. I'm not sure what all will be shared with us as Draven is a minor, but right now it's looking like the cause of death was drowning. My heart absolutely breaks for everyone that loved Draven. It's absolutely heartbreaking. It's horrible. It's, it's absolutely horrible. It's horrible to hear. Every It's horrible. It's it's the, the worst thing ever in the world. It's the worst. Now, I said something earlier about how members of my community had a stance. They, I'm not sure what the word is. Uh, a lot of people are very angry and upset that an Amber Alert was not issued. For those of you who don't know what an Amber Alert is, uh, I think it was in 1996, a nine-year-old girl named Amber was abducted from her home and then later found uh, murder. Now we have an Amber Alert, which alerts, I actually don't know who exactly it alerts. People with phones? Perhaps? It, it goes to everyone's phone? No, it wouldn't just go to phones, because before Amber Alerts were sent to my phone, they were broadcasted on the TV. An Amber Alert is a, it's a, no, it's a notification that you can't ever opt out of or get rid of. Amber Alerts, as soon as one is issued, will pop up on your broadcasting service, no matter what channel you're on, to alert you of um, the child's name and what they look like and where they were last seen, any suspects, where people can look or what people can do. It'll ring an alarm at you really loud. You wake up in the middle of the night because an Amber Alert's going off and you look at it and see what you can do and see where it is. It's a helpful tool that gets children found quicker or at all, if anything. I found myself confused as to why an Amber Alert was not issued and so I looked up the purpose of an Amber Alert. Why didn't Draven fit to this criteria? And if he did, then okay, why was it? why didn't it happen? Turns out I was unaware of uh, the purpose of Amber Alerts. I was under the assumption for some reason that an Amber Alert came out when a child was missing. So I believe it's because Draven was not abducted or taken, but I guess a runaway, that an Amber Alert was not issued. This brings up a common uh, argument i don't know how to what the word is my brain's a little foggy uh, this brings up a uh conflict no like a like a ah ah from some people in the community they're going ah you know i was getting messages from some people saying that there's a petition going around that is trying to create a draven alert and that alert is for missing autistic children who run away from home i've looked a lot of places and i can't find that petition but i have found another the petition that i've seen is for ontario to review their amber alert policies and that's all that it states i don't it didn't state what they want them to do or what the outcome they want to look like it's just review your policies. So I can't speak on to what they are hoping to achieve, but I can I can conclude that they wanted Draven's absence, Draven's missingness to be broadcasted in a similar way to an Amber Alert. I wanted to talk about this idea and just my, my thoughts on it. Before I say anything, I just want to solidify this even harder. If you guys are new to me, I love kids more than anything in the world, and the well-being of children is what drives me to exist every day. And I guess that's where I'm confused and cannot make a black and white decision because I don't know if there is one. I don't know what is the best for keeping wandering autistic children safe. I want to share some some thoughts. A runaway child or a child that leaves and is unsupervised, possibly in danger, by their own accord, that is not notified. The first question is, should we be notified when there is a missing child? And this is something that I'm unsure about for a few reasons. One, it tells everyone that there is a vulnerable child walking around and where that child is and what they look like and that they are unaccompanied and don't want to be at home. I think that could be quite dangerous. I worry that that puts that child in more harm. I think that scares me because I'm just, I'm terrified to know what someone could do with that situation. 
and knowing that it's being broadcasted to everyone sort of scares me at the opportunity that could create for some people. With a child who's been kidnapped, they are accompanied by a person, by an adult probably, which means that they are not going to be accompanied by any other adult. They are away from home or away from whatever um, against their own will. I don't think that the advertising of that induces horrible humans to go, let's trade roles. So I think that there's a difference between abducted children and missing children for that reason, and in alerting the public about their situations. However, I hate saying that because I want to find missing children. I want everyone to look for children who are missing so we can get them home safe. What happens when you find these children? What does a good person do when they find this child. Are you going to take the child? No. Are you going to, I guess you could call the police and stalk the child and make sure they stay in one place? Because you wouldn't want to run up to them, you wouldn't want to spook them. I'm sure that they got the Amber Alert if they have a thing. And if they really want to be away from home, they may be hiding from people. They may see that you're looking at them, call the police. They may run away from you. You don't want to grab them. You don't want to kidnap them. You wouldn't want to say, hey, you're that kid from the news. Come stand here. Stay here. I think that is difficult. My other point, I guess, that I want to talk about is I don't think that an alert specifically for autistic children or autistic children who've ran away or autistic children anything is perfectly okay and good and only positive. I don't know what saying they're autistic has to do with things, except that I'm sensing it increases the urgency. Uh, in my opinion, nothing should increase the urgency of finding a missing child who's potentially in danger. It doesn't matter anything at all. I want to find that child now. I want to find that child five minutes ago. And if like saying they're autistic makes people get off their ass, that bothers me. I also think that there are dangers that come from exposing that to everybody. As I was saying before, I think it's potentially dangerous to display the whereabouts of any a lone child ready for the taking anywhere, let alone also display that child is very vulnerable. That's very scary. That's very scary. Now you could say that by saying that the child is autistic, it could mean that the community can search more effectively considering what the community knows about autism. That begs the question, what does the community know about autism? But it also begs the question, how is knowing about autism going to help you find this one specific autistic child? To my first point, in the town of which I live, no one knows anything about autism. In the world of which I live, not many people do at all. But even myself, who knows a lot about autism and actually lives it every day. There is not too much that I could utilize in my knowledge to help find Draven. There are some things that were posted to help us with our search and this was from people who knew Draven personally. They shared things about his personality like he doesn't like being wet and he likes to hide. He could think that this is a game of hide and seek. I don't relate to the hiding. I wouldn't have known that Draven was going to hide because I'm not him. They shared what his favorite song was. And so they said, hey, if maybe people play this song, he might come out. I know a lot about autism, but I couldn't have guessed his favorite song. It was shared that he really likes police cars. And so there were times where police were just displaying their flashing lights. I wouldn't have guessed that. I hate cops and I hate flashing lights. Just by knowing he's autistic, it doesn't really tell you that much, except that his brain has short-term overconnectivity and long-term underconnectivity, and that makes him do a bunch of stuff but everyone 
does a whole bunch of stuff in different ways because we're all just still individuals. You wouldn't know whether if you found Draven, he would want to approach you or not, or if he would talk to you or not. Knowing that he's autistic doesn't mean much at all. And I think that it really shows him as a very vulnerable child that could easily be taken advantage of by the wrong people. I don't know if I have a deducive answer. I don't know if that's the correct word to use. I know that I wish that I knew about Draven's disappearance before I did. I'm really torn here. Do you think that the benefits outweigh the risks of sharing that information in a thing such as an Amber Alert? I guess that's the big question. There are benefits and there are risks, and do you think that the benefits outweigh the risks? I can't confidently say either because of how much I would hate to say that Draven's uh, disappearance should not have been broadcasted. I don't know what danger that could put missing children in. I don't know what danger that could put missing autistic children in. And because I do not know, I dare not make an opinion that is not based on facts. All I have is one based on feelings. And that's only half the story. I would love to start talking about this to see what you guys think. Are there any cases where this is similar? Are there things that you guys know about that are going on that are kind of in the same realm of what do we do about missing children? I know this isn't typically what I talk about here, uh, but I thought that it was an important one to share. So I'm very interested in hearing what you guys think. Raven's story breaks my heart as I'm sure it breaks all of yours. I'm sure there are parents of autistic children right now just beside themselves because you can imagine how it would feel. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for caring, and thank you for learning. That is all for me today and I will talk to you guys uh, soon, hopefully. See you later. Bye.